This is Andy with Rootley Trust Services. We're a real estate brokerage that does uh, property management. And um, why don't you just go over uh, screening techniques that we use. Um, uh, originally we had called this seven uh, steps to flawless tenant screening. However, um, we have a lot more steps than that that we do. So I wanted to go over our che a checklist real quick. Um, so you'll get some bonuses. So um, first of all, um, uh, whenever we get a new application, we uh, go ahead and um, add in a checklist to that application in Propertyware. Propertyware is this program we use for managing all our rental properties and it has just a lot of great features in, in, in reporting that helps us um, work with, helps us um, help our owners that, that have hired us. Um, but you could do the same thing on a piece of paper or have a checklist or anything like that. So um, uh, if, you're, if you're doing this yourself, but this is how we screen the tenants. So um, First of all, we always send them a welcome email, and um, and uh, so that's right here. It says app app come welcome. Um, we also give them a welcome call as soon as they fill out their application online. Okay, um, in that email, we're asking for extra documents, um, including a waiver to talk to their previous landlord as well as their employer if necessary. Um, uh, the second thing we do is we run their credit application, which includes a full background check credit and eviction check um, nationwide okay so we go ahead and run their credit take a look at that um, again this is the call I said we did called to let you know the welcome letter and docs and what we need um, uh, we always check with the most recent landlord and we check to see um, what they've said now in this case um, and, and then we we actually make a check here uh, for um, if there's any specific information about the, the supposed landlord they give us. So sometimes we'll always ask things like, do they live, is this a relative to you? Is there any special relationship other than landlord? Um, and so we make some notes about whether it's positive, but there's a full questionnaire that we actually evaluate other than that in this level right here. Um, and you feel free to give us, uh, ask us for that questionnaire. We can, we can certainly provide that for you. Um, uh, we check to see if their address matches in the credit report. So if the address they give us in the application doesn't match, match, match with the credit report, that's a potential issue. It could mean that they're lying about something or, or hiding their identity. Um, we'll check to see if the given landlord name matches the auditor site's record for the given address of the previous place they lived. So again, that's another verification. It's pretty easy. I mean, each of these only take about 30 seconds once you've done it a few times. So it's not that, that long. You can roll through these pretty quickly. Um, we always uh, ask for copies of the last 30-day pay stubs, um, and then we uh, save them uh, online, and we verify them. We uh, make sure that we have an ID of each person, so they're not just you know coming up with something random. They don't even have an ID, um, so we get a copy of the ID. We get pet photos because um, you know some people say it's a mutt, but it's really you know one of the dangerous breeds that we don't allow. Um, uh, we get an authorization signed here. And um, then we forward it off to the landlord. So it basically allows us to talk to anybody that we need to to verify what we need to verify. Um, and in addition to the, uh, the the search credit check we run, we also do, we check with the local clerk, the clerk of court's office because nationwide background checks, they're just not that great. None of them are. We've tried multiple of them and they've all had errors that we've found personally, which means there's one we haven't found. So screening is not perfect. You, you get what you can. You know, credit's almost always pretty good. A uh, good way of looking at things, but the background history and the and the credit checks, um, there's just certain built-in system issues when for these these data aggregators that when they're trying to pull data from thousands of different um, local um, document online management systems, um, there's all and trying to merge uh, multiple profiles together, uh, they're just they miss things sometimes and then they add things in that shouldn't be there. So, so we try to verify and just, especially the local courts, um, you know, check real quick and manually look ourselves because that's actually going to be the most accurate way. It's just, it's not as inclusive. Um, you know, if someone's moving from Florida, you're not going to get that from checking the local sites. Um, so, um, anyways, we, we, we note if there's any issues, this person, for instance, had some driving, um, issues normally don't count that against them if they had like you know um, you know speeding tickets and things like that 
Um, so there's three applicants, and we make little notes uh, next to each of these tasks just to kind of summarize things for us so we can uh, better make a decision. Um, uh, this, this is a kind of a summer area. It's not a task list. We've already checked and gotten verification, but then we kind of put information in about what's, what's happening. Um, made a decision. This was decisioned. So you, you take all that information, you make a decision. Um, then, of course, we notify the tenants. That's important. And when things get busy, you'd be surprised when sometimes these tasks don't get checked off. So, so um, that's why we have the task list, so that, it, so that we can make sure that it is done. And, um, and then uh, uh, um, what we always do is we try to get it reserved immediately. So we have a, a sheet that outlines the, the, the uh, basic uh, important things that you're going to be putting in the lease. And it's just a one-page sheet. It summarizes that. And then they sign it, and they give that with their money, and, they, and noting that they realize this money is not to be given back. We call it a premises hold fee rather than a deposit sheet or something like that because um, if it's a hold fee to hold the house, it's not to be refunded back. If it's called a deposit, then you actually will have to, court, will have to give it back if they change their mind. So we always call it a hold fee, which then will be applied to a deposit if and when they move in. And uh, that way we can take it off the market. And then um, um, we're well, pretty much done. So that's our um, screening process. It gives you a little information about what we do. It's all in our, our software. It's all very systematized. And we work through that every single time. All right. Um, if you have any questions about screening or anything like that, feel free to, to, to email us or call us or comment on the video, however you're seeing this, whether it's or, or a comment on the blog post if you see this in a blog. Have a great day. Attention landlords, are you interested in professional help, leasing, lease optioning, full service management, or acquiring more investment property? If so, please call 440-220-7300 or email us at sales at propertymanagementoh.com. To get tips, tricks, and relevant Cleveland, Ohio investment and landlord information, please visit propertymanagementoh.com forward slash news and subscribe to our newsletter.